Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. A shootout on Detroit's west side sends a Detroit police officer to the hospital tonight, lingering questions on what started it all. Frustrated by the lagging vaccinations across the country, President Biden getting right in the face of Americans today with a new aggressive plan to ramp up shots. Thanks for staying up with us tonight. The plan is largely tied to vaccine mandates through businesses. This would affect about 100 million Americans in total. That's right. The president's announcement comes at a time when cases and hospitalizations are surging across the nation. Jason Colthorpe has a closer look at the plan and some immediate reaction in our state. Guys, this is a six point plan and it relies on two executive orders and with four billion shots now having been given around the world, the president speaking directly to anti vaxxers asking what more do you need to see? The president announcing tough new COVID-19 vaccine requirements and directly challenging those who refuse to get the shot. We've been patient, but our patience is wearing thin. And your refusal has cost all of us. This is not about freedom or personal choice. It's about protecting yourself and those around you. It comes as hospitals around the country, including here in Michigan, warning they are again at capacity. We're in the tough stretch and it could last for a while. The plan requires vaccinations for 17 million healthcare workers. All businesses with 100 or more employees, which affects about 80 million Americans, and virtually all government workers and its contractors. If you want to work with the federal government and do business with us, get vaccinated. Keeping kids in school also a point of emphasis, but the president asking, not ordering, superintendents to get all employees and eligible students vaccinated. Shortly after, Los Angeles agreeing to require vaccines for all students 12 and older. But so far, nothing definitive from one of the president's biggest allies, Governor Gretchen Whitmer, from her office. Governor Whitmer shares the president's goal to tackle the virus, and our office is reviewing the president's plan to understand what this means for Michiganders. Now, the president also says he'd like to see all sports and concert venues have all fans vaccinated. I talked to the University of Michigan, which says no immediate changes coming to the big house. Michigan State University tells me it will be reevaluating its COVID protocols. And no word tonight from the Illich family, which owns the Tigers and the Red Wings, as well as LCA and several other concert venues. We'll have to see what happens with that. I'm Jason Colthorpe, Local 4. All right, Jason, the president's announcement came just hours after hospital leaders urged Michiganders to get vaccinated as COVID cases rise here. If you get the vaccine, you have a 0.001% chance of dying of a breakthrough infection. That's a staggeringly small number, and that is highly, highly effective. And I think people overestimate the effectiveness of the treatments that we have for COVID in, in comparison to the vaccine. We truly need to get the message across that our best treatment for COVID is to never get it in the first place. This is part of a Michigan Health and Hospital Association briefing. We have put the 12 major takeaways from it on the Michigan COVID page, which you'll find at clickondetroit.com. With 30 shell casings on the ground, Detroit police have spent hours in a west side neighborhood after an officer suffered a graze wound. Man who police say opened fire on officers was hit twice. Mara McDonald on the west side tonight. And Mara, uh, both are said to have non life threatening injuries. Take a look. You can see Detroit police have been out here for hours. The shell casings are still on the ground. Lots of questions about exactly how this all went down. Orange marks the spot of more than two dozen shell casings littering the ground, a DPD squad in the corner of Burwood and Cambridge. The chief says this started as officers on patrol and working a firearms investigation when? An uninvolved subject uh, who was seated in a vehicle parked just adjacent to where our officers were conducting their investigation uh, jumped out of that vehicle. Chief White says that young man had words with the officers and then pulled out a gun with an extended clip and started firing. Officers returned fire. 
His family members tell me off camera he used to live at that home on the corner of Burwood and Cambridge. It's his family's house. His mom and dad were inside with his brothers when all this went down. Neither his family or police can explain why he became involved in an investigation which had nothing to do with him. Police sources say multiple guns were recovered in his car and he has had a recent history of some mental health issues. After the bullet stopped, an officer was hit under his vest, but the chief says it's a graze wound. Thank goodness it's, it's non-life-threatening, uh, and the subject also was struck and also uh, is non-life-threatening, it appears, at this time. The chief's saying there's a lot of investigation that needs to be done here, including getting every piece of video they can possibly find. Body cams, dash cams, ring doorbells, they want to see it all. We're on Detroit's West Side. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Okay, Mara, a cool night, but uh, warmer weather is on tap for the weekend. And here's what happens when we're on very late. We run into Brandon. That's right, he's here. Who's here really <laughs> early, Brandon? Good morning, oh, everybody. <laughs> yes. Hope the uh, coffee pot is going and uh, maybe you're warming up the car early. It's not that cool. How are you doing here? 12, 13 a.m. on a Friday. It is cool out there. We've got mainly 50s, but 60 city airport, 49 right now in Lapeer. And noticeably cooler than it was this time yesterday. The negative number means how much cooler it is now compared to 24 hours ago. So we're 5 to 10 degrees cooler. We'll see 53 degrees overnight, which means, yeah, plenty more 40s in the suburbs and a little bit of patchy fog on our way to 75. Another nice fall like day tomorrow, but beautiful. I tell you, is it that Labor Day is the unofficial end of summer? Mother Nature disagrees. We've got a summer like weekend forecast coming up. Brandon, the state is ordering Ford to reduce all risks related to the toxic gas leak in Flat Rock and report back to Eagle daily. That order was issued in a letter Eagle sent to Ford this evening. 1,100 homes remain evacuated. EPA testing continues to show trace amounts of benzene in the sewer system. It's still not known when residents will be allowed to return home. Michigan's acting unemployment agency director goes before the House Oversight Committee to answer questions about the agency's problems over the past 18 months. When I look for a leader, the leader takes responsibility. They don't just blame other people. And that's what I keep hearing is just blaming other people. I'm sorry, who am I blaming? You're blaming we Congress. You're blaming the previous administration. You're blaming lack of funding. You're blaming all kinds of things. What you're not doing is you're not taking responsibility. I'm sorry, I absolutely take responsibility for what I have done since I entered this agency. Agency came under scrutiny for procedures and delays in paying benefits during the pandemic. Olson says the agency received 26 more times the number of usual claims and has paid 99% of the benefits that are due. State police share video of a police helicopter finding a shooting suspect who was on the run in Detroit. New video shows troopers scanning the area and zooming in on a person lying on the roof of a garage. Investigators say the man was a suspect who left the scene of a shots fired call. Police surrounded the garage and took the man into custody. Detroit Tigers broadcaster and Hall of Fame pitcher Jack Morris is going to be back in the booth for Friday night's game. Morris was suspended indefinitely, we were told last month, for a comment that he made about Angel star Shohei Otani. The Detroit Free Press, first to report the suspension, has ended. Valley Sports has not officially commented about Morris's return. City of Detroit wants to get more residents signed up for a stipend to help them with their internet service. The Emergency Broadband Benefit Program gives residents $50 a month. That money can be spent on internet bills or to get access to internet ready devices. 45,000 Detroit homes have signed up, which is the second most in the country. Sometimes we aren't able to pay the internet bill fully. And with this discount, our bill has been lowered a whole lot and it's been a true blessing to us. Detroiters interested in applying for the program can call the number on your screen. That number is 313-241-7618. The program is expected to end early next year. Still ahead, uh, elementary students allowed only 14 minutes to eat. The reason the district is cutting down on lunchtime inside their schools just ahead. And remembering their baby sister, a Wayne State grad went to New York with dreams of acting. Then it was all taken away. It's like uh, it just happened. 
you know, everything is so vivid still. How they're refusing to let COVID keep them from honoring their loved one, even if it's not how they planned. That's next.